At some point in life, I started to get excited about productivity apps. <laughs> I, I don't know when it was, but it has happened. And you know, whenever new apps come along and new things that people are talking about, I like to try them out, see how they work, see if I can like bring it into the way that I work. I kept hearing about this app called Notion, like so many people talking about it. It describes itself as an all-in-one workspace. And to me, it just looked overly complicated. I didn't really see how I would use it. Now, after like three weeks of using it, I get it. I understand the hype, I'm, I'm sold, I'm on board. The best thing I can suggest if you're curious is to just sign up, have a little poke around, play around with the features, figure out what it does, and then just kind of have it there in the background. And I think as you go through life, you start thinking, oh, actually that's something I could use that for. And it starts becoming just really useful. So after binge watching loads of videos about Notion, the thing that I was most drawn to is this idea of using it like a second brain. Now, as an artist creative person, you might think that I'm not really into organization and structure and that is true like I work in quite a sporadic chaotic type of way I'm definitely a go with the flow type person and you know if I get a spark of inspiration I want to run after that and so I don't work in the most structured way and I, I get that but I do like having lists I do like having things that help me to just clear my head and like gather thoughts together I don't know about you but when I have a lot of things in my head maybe it's tasks I need to do or even ideas or Little things I just need to remember, um, writing them down on a list helps me so much, whether it's on paper, with an app like Todoist, I just like put all these things down and then suddenly it's there, it's written, I know I'm not going to forget it and it doesn't have to like stay in my head. So for me, Notion kind of took that idea to the next level, it became like a file system for my brain and my life and a way of organising everything that's going on in my head. The more I played around with it, the more ideas I came up with how I could use it and um, it's been really fun. And yes, I just described a database as fun. I don't know what's happened to me. The closest thing I can compare it to is like building a website and something like Squarespace. It's kind of like drag and drop. You can bring in titles and all these different elements, customize it however you like. It's almost the animal crossing of productivity apps. Like you make your own little island and you customize it and lay it out however you want and then watch like 10 hours of YouTube videos of people giving tours of their island and you guys do that too, right? That's not just me. Now, in my YouTube scrolling, I saw a lot of videos about how architects and uh, videographers and students and people learning languages use this app, but I didn't see any specifically from like artists or um, you know songwriters and musicians and that kind of thing. So that's the plan for today. I'm going to give you guys a little overview tour of my Notion workspace and how I use it as an artist. Before we jump into the tour, I wanted to take a minute to mention our sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take their next step in their creative journey. There's a huge range of classes on there, whether you're a beginner and just starting out or you're experienced in what you do. There's things from like video, design, illustration, even productivity, even Notion. They've got classes about Notion. It's a great way to just learn new things, to like explore your creative curiosities. Recently, I've been playing around with the Apple Pencil and trying to figure out how to use Procreate and I watched Liz Cola Brown's class called Ink Illustration Techniques in Procreate and it was so helpful, like it just helped me figure out the whole thing of how it works, try out new things that I never would have thought to do on my own. So I highly recommend that one if you're into Procreate, but there's a whole bunch of stuff. Go check out the website, have a little explore of what you can do. So if you're interested, the first 1,000 people that click the link in the description of this video will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium and you can take as many classes as you want in that time. It's amazing. Go check it out. Thank you, Skillshare. Let's get back to the tour. Okay, so this is the first page you come to in my Notion workspace. I've divided everything into home or work. The home section is basically like a contents page of different pages that I've set up that are useful for referencing. So things like shopping lists, travel plans, RIP 2020, nice things. I just kind of put stuff there. It might be like a Spotify song or a piece of artwork I found from Pinterest, something that's just like a nice thing to have every now and then, a little personalized area. I won't spend a lot of time here because I think the work side is probably more interesting to you people, but um, some fun stuff is like the anime list. So this is a template just based on like Notion's thing. I've got a little custom icon and stuff like that, but I basically paste in IMDB links using this add an anime button, paste it in there. And yeah, I can keep track of things that like people recommend that I'm going to watch next, what I'm currently watching. And then, um, once I've finished watching it, I can move this down into my watched list and it goes down there and I can move the next one up into current. So I've kind of colored the current one in green just to like make that look a bit nicer. But 
Simple way of keeping track of that. The movie list is the same thing, but for movies, reading is a little different. In reading, I have this little table. This is actually inspired by my dad. This is something he does when he reads a book. He keeps track of it, what he read, what the genre was, the year that he read it, uh, a little rating and maybe some notes about it. So I've just been trying to do that, trying to like retrospectively think about books that I read before this year, but I've definitely <laughs> forgotten quite a lot and missed some out. But if you wanted to like, you could actually open these up as pages and like add loads of notes and pictures and all that stuff in there. But I do keep my book notes separately on an app called Bear. Um, I also have a study section. This is stuff that's like, I'm just studying personally, like learning Japanese. I have notes on a few things like my phrases that I've been learning from Pimsleur unit one, um, basic travel phrases. This is stuff that I was learning for the last time I went to Japan. I'm currently trying to add this list that I just copied from my notes into this table. Um, as you can see here, I've set a little like reminder that I need to add those lists. <laughs> so sometimes I'll just add a little to-do list within a page. If it's like related to something in that page, like I'll just, I need to remember to do this on my notion page here. Um, I also have progress. I'm trying to work my way through Pimsleur courses and then I'll probably go into like Asimil, use the HelloTalk app a bit more and maybe get a tutor after that. Got some resources, um, just videos that I found the Pimsleur link all that kind of stuff. That's a similar format for things like piano and drawing, just again, resources and all that stuff. That's the home section, pretty simple. Now we come into the workspace. This is definitely the more uh, feature packed area. So right over the top, I have a list of projects. These are kind of like the bigger areas of work and kind of divided down that way. Um, this is just a gallery that I've basically just linked to different pages with. Um, I have this little task list, which is kind of an inbox for all of the pages. So this pulls tasks out of set sale, out of, you know, any of these projects into here. If it's, um, currently listed as in progress, this will make more sense in a little bit, but yeah, I have a resources section, just some little links for stuff that I want to check out later might help me with some general work stuff, content calendar. Um, I find it hard to keep track of multiple social media accounts. So I had this idea of using this calendar and just adding in like, okay, on, on Tuesday, I'm going to post, um, to let's say the set sale account. Um, and I might change that color to be green, for example. Um, and we're going to do like a playlist post on set sale on that day, you know, and then maybe Thursday new song post on my account. That kind of thing. So just a way of kind of seeing like posts that I want to schedule throughout the week. Uh, let's take a look at set sale though. Um, let's open this as a full page. So we go into the set sale workspace and this was kind of my starting point, honestly, for trying out notion. So in set sale, we use Asana most of the time and we have like a Kanban board and we put things that are like our focus jobs, things that are in progress, things that are done and move them around on the board. And we have all our tasks there, but I found it a little bit limited, um, particularly if you want to go in and add detail. So what I loved was that we can actually do stuff here with a Kanban board. So I just added this in, um, and this is basically what Asana does, but it's right here in notion. And you know, if there's any more detail that I want to add in on something, I can go in, add pictures, like add a task list within that subtasks, all that stuff. Um, so you can really go like as in depth as you want to go. I have the bigger projects listed up here again. So if I go into playlists, for example, these are playlists that we're working on. These ones are already live. This is one that I'm about to make thinking about international worship playlist. Got a bunch of embedded links here, which are, um, songs that people from our discord server recommended that I'm going to check out. Um, the set so YouTube channel again, is like its own space. So again, we have a Kanban board just for the videos. Um, separate to the overall tasks, which is really handy. I can go in here and do all kinds of things. So you can see the current video is in shoot, um, how I use notion as an artist. We've got ones that we're editing ones that are done. If you're looking like the ones that are done, like I have my whole script in here. So I will use this to like read out the script for the video. You can see that, um, the sponsor is listed in there. What project it's under the status, all that stuff. I can add a deadline and then view it in a calendar view. And this is like the really cool thing about notion is that you can basically do things anyway. So 
even though I'm in board view right now, I could switch this to table view and have it that way. And I could even add like a calendar or a timeline and I could view all the same projects just in a different way. But yeah, I will just add video ideas in here when it's just something that pops in my head and I'm like, oh, that would be cool to make one day. It might never get done. It might just be like a random thing that pops in here, but I can then start to move it along and go, okay, let's write a script for one. Sometimes I write scripts for videos and don't even make them. I wrote this script ages ago. I might make the video, I might not. Um, move it into the shoot and then edit and then it's done. Uh, I also have this little wiki area, which is kind of just information about set sale and useful things like PNGs of the logo, um, even illustrator files. I can download the editable files of the logo. I have a little gallery of like examples of how the branding's used, our mood board, um, fonts that we use with a uh, place to download all of that stuff. So just kind of useful resources and obviously we can collapse these, but yeah, it's like being able to make your own little Wikipedia page about whatever you want. Take a look at some other projects like my solo stuff. Um, again, this one's quite developed. I have a Kanban board. Again, this is being pulled from tasks. Um, let me talk about this actually. So I have all the tasks for everything that I need to do in its own database, right? Which is called tasks and they're all here. And then within the workspaces, um, so in set sale, I'm basically running a filter on tasks, which says if the project contains set sale, so it's from a set sale project and it's not a video because that has its own area, then show all these tasks here. Um, oops, did that one. If I click into my solo stuff, um, again, you'll see the filter here where the project is Jonathan Odlin and the type is not a song because I have my own area for songs. Um, all of those get pulled in here as well. So I'm using the same tasks database across the whole of my notion. And then I just pull them in with different views, depending on which project I'm in. So I find that really handy. Um, and of course, if I ever want to just see everything that I'm doing, I can jump straight over to tasks and see all the tasks in one place. Now, each of these tasks are actually their own page, right? So I can click into this. This is where it starts to get really powerful, I think. So, you know, these tasks on a board or on a list are not just tasks, but they're pages that within each page, there can be however much information you want it to be. And when I'm talking about this idea of being able to collect the information that's in my brain, this is what I mean. So personal branding, this is a task that um, isn't really something I'm actively working on right now, but it's something I'm just thinking about. So I've started to think a bit more about the brand of what I put out, right? And like the overall design of it and that kind of thing. And literally just as I'm browsing the internet or I find stuff, I'm like, oh, that font's nice. I just dump it in this page. Or, um, you know, I really like this design. I like the layout and the, the combination of like the clean font and the, the slightly serif type one that's going on there. And then this is something I made in Procreate the other day, just trying to pull colors out of my Instagram feed. Got it in there for reference. I also have just a reference of some channels that I really like their thumbnails and the way they do that. So, you know, this is just, it's kind of a mood board, Pinterest type thing, but it's a way of just having a space to put the things that I'm thinking about and the things that I find while I'm browsing online. And so when I talk about Notion being a second brain, this is kind of what I'm talking about. Like everything, pretty much every area of my life, everything that I think about or have to do for work or personal stuff, whatever it is, like it has a page and it has an area. All of this is just stuff that no longer lives in my head, but lives here, you know, and I can just come up with an idea and it, there's a place that it can go. And um, I just find that very helpful. Useful reference documents. So things like press and media appearances. This is like every time there's a podcast or an interview or radio appearances, all that kind of stuff. Um, we do this for our band Rivers and Robots as well, because it's really useful for things like applying for a visa or, you know, referencing, you need to like pull, oh, what was that interview I did a few months ago? And you can go and find it rather than just digging through Google. Um, so hopefully this is starting to make sense of like why this is a useful app. Like these kind of things would be stuff that I would just have in like a Google doc somewhere or uh, a pages document that's saved somewhere in Dropbox on some random folder or on a different Mac and just having it in the same place that I have my tasks and I have like references and everything just makes so much sense. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite and most used areas of Notion uh, is my songs database. So inside songs, I have everything that I'm currently working on. This might be something I'm writing, something I'm producing for somebody else. 
or something that I've written that is now being produced, it'll go in this column. Um, you can also see that I have tagged like the people that I'm working on that song with. Um, and yeah, it can pull in things like album artwork, which just comes from like being added as the header. Once I add the cover as the cover image, it pulls it through to here, makes it look all nice. Now for the people on these songs, I'm using something called a relation. So basically I have a separate database, uh, which is called directory. You can see it down here, um, which has a list of people I've been working with. And basically I have this linked to the songs database. So for any song that I'm doing, I can always pull somebody from the directory database. And this, this isn't like a, a person or a user. You can add users to Notion, but this is just like every person is a database entry basically. Um, and what that enables me to do is not only does it look nice and I can see who's on each song, but it means that I can, um, you know, filter things down and say like, just show me songs that uh, I've worked on with Joe, for example. And it will show me like this one we just started and always on my mind that we finished. And then of course, within those databases, you can go and add like all the contact details or things like PRS numbers when you want to go and register a song and you want to make sure that like they're on all the writing credits and stuff like that. Another thing that I love about Notion is the way that you can set up templates for tasks that you create. So I have a template here for when I'm songwriting. I tap songwriting. So it already gives it this nice little icon. Um, and then it brings in this layout, which I just set up just like I did then, but I've saved as a template. So I can start to write my lyrics in here. Um, I like to have a little ideas dumping ground where just, you know, as you're talking with somebody about what's the song about, we could say, um, this song's about journey. It's, it's a reference to this Psalm. It's like Psalm 82. I don't even know what Psalm 82 is, but you know, you can just put your ideas down there. You can start writing lyrics in here, leave inspiration and references. And I also have other, and under here I have this release checklist. So this probably won't be useful until you come around to actually releasing the song, but um, for putting out a single, there's this little drop down, and it has just all that little stuff that you forget to do. So I need to upload the lyrics to Genius and create digital assets, all the sharing, email people, generate your bio, and all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously I don't need that for every song, so I can just hide it, but I love being able to like do that and say, okay, here's a new song. It's already gone straight into the writing section because it's a new writing thing. And there it is, it already has the layout, already has everything I need. Um, so the fact that you can customize those templates is really powerful. I actually did this with um, the song I was writing with David. So uh, he actually invited me to his workspace for this page. And as we were writing the song, we worked on this together and it meant you know, similar to Google Docs and all that stuff, like I could see him typing things in while I was typing stuff. And it just made it really nice, especially writing over Zoom to be able to be like, okay, what do you think about this line? Um, what if we move like, you know, could be like, I like this verse, but what if we put that verse after the pre-chorus, you know, and we can like literally show everything that's going on. Um, see it developing before our eyes. You know, we had this area where we just, wrote down like lines and just things. We didn't have any song inspo for this one. No inspiration whatsoever. Um, no, I'm kidding. But yeah, this was on his space and I basically just, you can duplicate the file. So I duplicated it and brought it into my space and then um, put it here in my list of songs. And so the fact that you can do that is so good. And like, but yeah, that's basically how it works. So I have a home section. I have my work section, everything in there. Um, my tasks list, which is like all of my tasks. Uh, I have an archive, which is just where I move old pages. Songs, which again is all of my songs and a directory of like people that I'm working with. Um, that's basically it. So there we go, guys. That was my Notion tour. Hopefully you enjoyed it and maybe it gave you some ideas for yourself as well and how you can attempt to bring some level of organization to the chaos of the creative brain. <laughs> if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to as many as I can. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon with another video.